Hey, this is Ryan Sales with CG Hacks. And this summer, we will be creating a hardcore action movie poster. So the first question we need to ask ourselves is, what makes a great action movie poster? Well, I did what any normal human being would do, and I googled it. And here's what I discovered. One predominant thing you're going to see a lot of is what I like to call cinematic lighting. So if we go into Google and we type in action movie poster, these are the examples that we get. Most all of these movie posters have roughly the same type of lighting. It's the type of lighting that I'm kind of using right now. It's you've got a main light hitting the subject and you've got at least two rim lights cutting out the subject from behind. You're going to see at least a minimum of a three light setup. You're going to see main light, rim lights, hair light, and so on. So maybe three to four lights. We'll click this one as an example. You're going to see main light on the subject, rim lights cutting the subject out. Same thing here, same thing here. Click on this example, you see main light, rim lights cutting them out. Same thing here, main light, rim lights cutting them out. And on and on the examples go. Another feature you're gonna see a lot of is warm and cool cinematic color tones, like orange and blue. Again, if we scroll through a lot of these images, you're gonna see these colors. Like if I click right here, you've got orange and blue, orange and blue, orange in the skin tones, blue right here. You've got orange and blue, 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 yellow and blue, different, but not really. Orange and blue, orange and blue, you get it. Why orange? Because normally you see a lot of fire. And that brings us to our next point, which is there's always fire, explosions, fire embers, action posters always bring the heat. Some movie posters have a collage of different characters, others have just an individual hero. There's usually always a hero pose or action pose. And last but not least, very important to remember, there's always a gun. Always. It's always a gun. So, let's hop into the photo studio aka my garage and let's see if we can't make this thing happen all right so here we are in my tiny one car garage studio and this is my lighting setup that i have right now i've got my main light with an octabox on it it's a 35 inch octabox right here we've got our two rim lights with a strip box and there's a grid on both of my rim lights to kind of help project more of the light on me and less on the background, which will help the extraction process in Photoshop. So I may experiment around with like a blue color gel on the main light and with some warm orange color gels on the rim lights. Uh, usually I would say don't use color gels because you could always change that in post, but if you wanna make your life a little bit easier and go ahead and shoot with it and you know what you're going for, by all means go for it. So I might do a little bit of both. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a couple of shots. And then we're gonna take it into Photoshop and see what we can create. To give myself a little extra inspiration, I did type in action movie poster into Midjourney to see what kind of AI generated images it would pop up. And sure enough, you've got a lot of different collages with orange and blue color tones, the cinematic lighting, all of that. You also see a lot of white and a lot of more recent action movie posters. And so I think I'm gonna incorporate some of these slanted looking designs in my image as well. Once I got into Photoshop, the first thing I did was extract my subjects with the magic wand tool using cloud detail for a quick extraction. Next, I started to build out the scene by dragging my cutout subjects into a new document using a golden spiral as a guide for composition. Once the scene was set up the way I wanted, I started to bring in some of our fire effects, and I actually used these fire effects to create this slanted motion blur for the poster, so I went to Filter, Blur, Motion Blur, placed it at a 45 degree angle, and adjusted the blur amount, and then hit OK. Once I did that, I then made a copy of this layer and changed the blending mode to kind of create a little bit more of a hot spot type of effect, give it more of a fiery look. And then once I had my final version of that, I then changed the blending mode to screen to make it transparent so that we could see it with the rest of the subjects. Every good movie poster needs a muscle car, right? So I used the same method to extract the car as I did the subjects, AKA me, and I placed it into the composite along with the final subject, me, and made some minor tweaks along the way. And if you're wondering why there's so many different versions of me, it's because there's not many models available at 9 p.m. at night. I swear it's not vanity. I'm not an egomaniac. 
After that, I used some digital flares from our new lens effects pack, dragged them into the comp, changed the blending mode to screen, and placed them accordingly. Next up, I added a new highlight layer set to the blending mode color dodge and painted with an orange brush some nice fiery highlights on my subjects. Now just a reminder, this is not like a step-by-step -step tutorial. This is basically just kind of a overview. I did try a lot of experimentation here, playing around with different colors, adding in some smog effects to bring in some smoke and atmosphere, and making a lot of tweaks and adjustments along the way. Now here you'll see me play with the adjustment layer selective color, which I've already discussed that in a previous YouTube video. It's a very powerful tool in adjusting color in your Photoshop composites. Now we're going to be adding more fire and fire embers and smog to our composite to really give it some more action oriented stereotypical movie poster effects and last but not least no movie poster is complete without your title and all of your credits that you're going to be putting on the poster so i made up a bunch of stuff and put it on there if you get the time to read it it's pretty amazing. And finally, I'm going to use one of my favorite plugins for Photoshop by Composite Nation called Oniric. It's a non-destructive glow generator. You should definitely check it out. But I'm going to use this plugin to add in some really awesome glow effects to my composite. Going to do a few more minor tweaks and adjustments, add some digital flares, and this is our final product. So just to recap, Several things you want to remember when you're making your action movie poster is you want to have great cinematic lighting. Lighting is key. The cinematic color tone is usually always warm and cool. You got your orange and blues. That's the kind of color scheme that is normally in most movie posters. They're going to bring a lot more cinematic awesomeness. Yeah. To your image. Explosions. <laughs> got to bring the fire to the image. You know, you got to draw them in with the heat. Got to have your hero pose, whether it's an individual or collage. You got to have a gun. Yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Please let us know what you'd like to see us work on next by leaving a comment in the comment section below. If you're interested in buying any buff gear, be sure to use my affiliate link in the description below. And until next time, create more, say less, and stay creative.